Hi, in this video I'm going to help you prepare for a lesson in the .NET Unity Framework for Dependency Injection. So this will be an introduction to Unity Framework, but also the idea of dependencies in general. Now I have another video that you could see about dependency injection and showing different ways that you could do it. This one here is going to prepare you for how to use the Unity Framework. Now Unity Framework is one of many choices that you could pick from in C-sharp. So you can use Unity or you can see the others such as Structure Map or Windsor Castle or AutoFAC or others. They all do pretty much the same thing is that we are trying to manage your classes so that they are less tightly coupled. Dependency injection means that you simply follow one rule, that when you are writing a definition of a new class, never instantiate anything inside of it. For example, look at this code. Inside of this method, there is a class that is instantiated called DataGetter, and this is the type of model that we're trying to avoid. This is tightly coupling two classes together. One completely depends on the other. Now, one way to get rid of this is to pass in data getter as a parameter up here in the parentheses. However, we're going to show you in this video how we're going to use the Unity framework for dependency injection. So, Unity and other injections do this. We take the dependencies that you're trying to use inside a class and we inject them into something called a service container. The container idea is common to injection frameworks. The idea here is we don't want to have concrete implementations but simply references to them that are bound together at runtime. There are two main advantages to doing this programming this way. One is loose coupling. Loose coupling allows one class to exist without the other being instantiated. Designing by contract is how we're doing this, interfaces. A lot of people want to do this because of testing purposes. That's usually the main thing that comes to mind, is that you can test a piece of code without having to depend on another code. Dependency injection is one of five things in solid programming. See another video I have for how these things work. Solid programming involves single responsibility of a class, open-close designs, that you always extend a class instead of modifying the existing code. Liskov substitution teaches us that we should make sure that our children of parent classes do not cause exceptions if you use them in a method. Also, interface segregation is a term where you do not force your users to adopt a bunch of interfaces that they don't need. In the case that we're specifically talking about in dependency injection is the last phrase here, or dependency inversion. And the, this makes a program is much more flexible where you can swap out parts easily with just a line of code change. A key part of dependency injection is this idea called a container. A container is really a class or it's a list. It's a, it's a list of things that you want to make sure are registered and can be inserted into other classes. The word inversion of control really means a programming technique. It's not really any product or anything. It's just a way that we design our software. So the technique of inversion of control means that one class that is a parameter of another is injected into code that is called that class. Injected really means just passed in by some kind of a reference. Any information about their creation is kept away from the inside of the class. So just like I showed you the bad practice where you instantiate one class inside of another, or making sure that they are passed in through this injection process. So the purpose of injection is to make code maintainable, easy to update, and maybe we could add testing here as well. A key idea is that injection, or passing by parameters, is that object coupling is bound at the runtime of your application rather than compile time. And so you won't get errors until you actually click the green run button if you've done something wrong. Here are two cases where you might use injection as a solution. So services that are used throughout your program that can be changed out. For instance, nlog was one activity that we did earlier in the class. nlog is a logging service. 
you could probably swap out analog for another logging service just by changing one line of code if you used it with dependency injection. Business services and databases and things like that also would qualify similar to logging applications. Also, think of a test situation. Suppose you have a test set up that is automatically testing to see if your registration will work. Now we could use the real live database where you have all your live users or you could have a mock-up database with three sample users. Dependency injection allows you to swap out the database with one line of code. Not much changes and you can do testing on the, ca on the test cases rather than on the live data. Now let's talk about the activity that's coming up in the next video. Here's the recipe that we're going to do. We're going to follow several steps to include this Unity IOC container. So for instance, we are going to create a service interface class. And then we're going to implement that class and then we'll have to configure it. So two classes and a configuration file and we'll make this thing work. There are three different kinds of injection types. So first of all, you can do injection right in the constructor of a class. You can see here that we have a class called Testing Logging Service Controller. And we have a service called iLogger that is being called here. And so this is a parameter that is coming into the constructor. The second way to inject a concrete implementation into a class is through this property. So we create a property in this square brackets and we say dependency. And then we tell it that iLogger is going to be injected into this class. A third way that we can do dependency injection is through method parameters. So we can inject a concrete implementation into a parameter. So you can see this here is the iLogger is the uh, type that we're trying to inject. And in this initializer, we have a parameter called iLogger and the, the actual instance is logger. And so this is a third way. So what are the three ways that we're going to see for injections? We can do it through constructor, we can set up a property, and we can pass it in through a method. So here's the recipe for us to build our service. We're going to create an interface class, then we're going to implement that class, and then finally we'll just repeat that for all other concrete implementations. So here's what it might look like in the code that we're about to do. We're going to open up the Unity config file and we're going to then bind the service to a concrete implementation class using the register types method. And so, so we're going to see this container dot register type and then we can uh, tell it all of the different classes that are going to be included in this program. So we'll be registering multiple types. So in the third step of our recipe, we're going to actually use the service. And we'll choose one of these three ways. We use a constructor injector that takes the service interface as an argument to the constructor. And then the second is we're going to use a method instructor, which takes a service interface as an argument. And the third is a property, which will be passed in through a parameter. A key idea is that whenever we are calling one of these injected items, we are going to use its interface, not the actual concrete implementation. So coming right up, we're going to actually code these things and we'll go from all these abstract ideas into something hopefully that looks literally concrete and you can see the examples line by line. So stick around for an example of using the Unity framework.